Hey everyone, Argleflump here, playing Miss Clue, Trials of Salem. In this video, I will play chapter number four. Mrs. Bradbury! Mrs. Bradbury, this is a friend. Hello, who's there? A friend, I have news. Come with me, I have something to show you. Do I have a choice? Not really, now get going. Hmm, okay, so Judge Corwin stole Mrs. Bradbury right when we were about to talk to her! Oh no, that's awful! So what's he gonna do with her? Uh oh, I think I see them. That was them, right? Something's happening there? Let's follow. Maybe you could open the window, Jane. Maybe. Oh, is this a puzzle? Is this... Is this some sort of stacking challenge? Hmm, let's see. Okay, bucket goes there. That goes on top of the bucket. Can I put the barrel on top? Oh, no, wait! That's good enough! Or not. I, I just killed Jane. Okay. Let's try putting the barrel, I mean the box first, and then the barrel on top. You're probably wondering why I brought you here. Uh, I am past wondering at any action you take. I have sent my family to Boston, so there will be no chance of a witness to what I'm about to tell you. After what you have said in court, I cannot imagine there is anything left you could say that would be of the slightest interest to me. You are mistaken. I can assure you that what I'm about to say will be of particular interest to both you and your family. <laughs> Nevertheless, it has come to this. You have seen the accusations, the indictments, and the trials flowing from those events, all occurring since the beginning of this year. Has it not struck you as unusual? that this should happen at this particular time. There has been a certain desperation in the proceedings that has not escaped me, nor your part in it. Indeed, we have had accusations of witchcraft ever since coming to this new world, but it has never played out in this way. To be perfectly frank, there are those of us who saw this coming over a year ago. There are forces at work here shaping our destiny, and they have little to do with the wonders of the invisible world. And what might those be? It comes to this. You can either manage your fate or become the victim of it. My family has always chosen the former. For centuries, we have controlled power, acting as the Knights of the Shire in Cumberland, and we intend to do the same in New England. Time will tell. This is a new beginning. But, in this case, an old result. With Hawthorne and I as judges, and my nephew George as High Sheriff, we have assisted, and in some cases, instigated the events which have brought you to this moment. You are witness to what has befallen those who preceded you, so there can be no doubt as to the seriousness of your predicament. You have said nothing that is not already familiar to me. Did it not strike you as odd that you should be ensnared in these proceedings, when the charge against you is an old one, and you live in so remote a district as Salisbury? Again, you are only saying what is obvious. Let's be blunt, then. I have managed all of this hysteria and these trials for one end, and that is to place before you and your husband an inescapable decision. And what decision is that? A decision which might be made easier for you if you understand the circumstances. While it is not generally known, England no longer has trees of sufficient size to construct the masts required by our warships and heavy trading vessels. The Danes were supplying those trees, but to thwart our naval power cut off the supply 40 years ago. Since then, England has relied on the shipment of those trees from here in New England. To control this resource, the Crown is now requiring that all trees 24 inches in diameter and larger, and not on private property, be marked explicitly as belonging to the Crown. Which brings us to you. How is that possible? Quite simply, Hawthorne and I have a large sawmill in Maine, which has made a 
business of fortune supplying those trees to the crown. However, with this change in status and the fact that all the large trees near the coast have been cut down, we find our interests severely compromised and our sawmills operations at risk. Hawthorne's brother, who is married to my sister, manages that mill and assures me that our continued success relies on our procuring a source of trees from private lands near the coast. Now, do you understand the import of the situation? So that's what this is all about. Sheer, unadulterated greed. It has nothing to do with greed. It is all about maintaining the structure of our society and our place in it. To that end, I have a document here that I would like to show you. This guy will not stop talking. Jeez. Know what this is? I'm not certain. This is the grant of land to your husband Thomas, made when he was acting as land agent for his great uncle Ferdinando Gorgias. As you might recall, Gorgias had the land patent for the province of Maine. So, that's what this is all about. Precisely. Your husband's land grant in Maine is now worth a king's ransom, this year and for many years to come. And of course, it is critical to England, my family's mill, and to me personally, and I plan to have it. How did you get that document? My good friend, Judge Stoughton, provided it to me from the archives in Boston. My god, is there no one not involved in this? Very few in positions of there is still Thomas Danforth who stands against us. He was once lieutenant governor, but no more. That position has also been taken by Stoughton. Governor Phipps might oppose us, but he is busy fighting the French and Indians in Maine, and consequently protecting the land which will soon be mine. You have inflamed the passions of this hysteria, and let good men and women go to their deaths, all to maintain the status of yourself and your cohorts. Is he supposed to be saying something now? He's not saying anything, he just leaned forward and said nothing. I see you understand, but let us not lay aside the service we perform for our country. I am speechless! Oh, there we go! Okay, well, <laughs> he gave quite a long lecture explaining every single thing that happened. And he kind of brought up a good point, 
Forgery would be a lot easier than 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 this than this. I mean, if his his end goal was just this one lady, why did he have to kill like dozens of innocent people in, in order to get to that result? He could have just arrested her outright. He could have just like arrested her husband. He could have probably killed them if he's got friends and all the judges and whatever. We're gonna try to help her escape now, right? Because we're good people. We're good people. Okay, so I've got a plan. I've got a plan, and you know, unlike the bad guy's plan, uh, it will not take several years to go into effect. These are some slow-moving bad guys, let me tell you. So let's just go home. That's what we're doing now, right? Right. Two days in effect. That's when that's when the groomsman is going going out to the pub and and therefore Mrs. Stoughton will be all alone and we can just break into the uh, the groomsman area and save her. Is that my plan? I probably should have told my plan to the old lady just to give her some comfort. No, it's 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 obviously better. It's obviously better to be mysterious and stuff like that. I just did that. Oh, I have to take his little blankie off, too? I want to take off his little blankie. I'm guessing I have to put those back before leaving. Okay, so where does it go? Um, It was here, right? Oh no, I'm expected to remember this. Maybe I can just leave without putting it back. I'll just do it in the morning. <laughs> Maybe? We'll see if the game lets me sneak out. Come on, game. What does that mean? Exactly? Curry? We're giving him food? Is that what it means? Oh, I guess it meant take that thingy off. Okay, cool. So now let's escape. I really should carry runner after that ride. <sighs> nope, okay. I guess I have to give him food then. He's a horse, Jane. He's a horse. He doesn't, he, d he doesn't, I was going to say matter, but no, he doesn't care. He's a horse. He just wants to sleep. Okay, so I can't get him food here. Um... Oh, I got something. Is that a courier? <laughs> Is courier even a word in this particular instance? Does she mean brush? Is she trying to say brush, but she's just being all fancy about the terminology? I can brush a horse, sure. Thank you so much for being such a great horse tonight. Good to see we agree you're a great horse. Okay. Coolio. So now I can leave? Oh, great job. Oh. Jane, 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 now I know you're just trying to stretch things out as long as possible. Come on now. All right, let's get some grain for this horse. Oh, right, we have to get the bucket and then give him the grain. Okay, I remember this, kind of. Kind of 
of a pain that you can only look at the the horse's stall from a particular direction, only one direction. Oh, hey, it's daytime again. Oh, no, 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 it's back to nighttime. And this is the wrong way. This is the right way. Man, how about that evil villain plan? I, I want to talk more about it, but it was just so long. They were talking for so long. I just... I can't remember everything now. You're a pretty boy. You're a pretty boy. Here's some grain for you. There you are, all ready for the night. Yeah, night. Right, okay, so now I can leave? Oh, Jane, Jane, Jane. Okay, groom's chamber is here. Uh, where should I put it, though? I don't want to leave it here. Last time I knocked over a cup, and then I got in trouble. Hmm. I can kind of explore the groom's house. Can I? Can I? Can I steal his stuff or something? Look at his letters. No? Okay, fine. I'm just being a nice person then. Oh, anyway, it's late at night. I should be going back. You just curried him, Jane. Wh wh what? <sighs> okay. You've been fed and curried, and now you're getting curried again. Okay, anywhere else I can curry you, bro? No. Now I should be able to leave. I should put the saddle and tack away first. I... I don't know what to say here. This... This is just getting kind of ridiculous. Where do I put it away, Jane? This thing obviously goes here. Does the saddle go here? Obviously not. It doesn't go with the other saddle. Why would it go with the other saddle? That's a ridiculous thing for me to think. Does it go here? No. Why would it go there? That's a ridiculous thing for me to think, too. Does it go here? No. Why would it go there? Anywhere down here? Maybe it goes inside this box. Tis locked. Tis locked. I have a key. Do I unlock it first? It doesn't fit. <sighs> Tis locked. Well, where do I put the saddle? Come on. Come on, game. Be nice to me. Making me try every single place ever. <sighs> yeah. Um. No, honestly, I have no idea where this goes. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps I can just leave now and the game will assume that I put it away? Let's see. Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, I, I actually went and, and, and checked. So the saddle does come from that, that, that locked treasure chest. Thing. I, I guess it's probably not called a treasure chest. <laughs> but um, the key to that treasure chest was this key right here. So I guess we have to steal the key again, put put the, put the saddle away, and, and then return the key. Okay then. Okay then. 
Well, that explains why I got stuck earlier. <laughs> still, still, I mean, this is kind of a long challenge. And it's basically just... The challenge is to leave. <laughs> it seems kind of silly to have all these steps just for a leave the building challenge. Okay, so this had better be it, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing besides this. This is the end of the incredibly long and complicated challenge of leaving in the middle of the night. Okay, fingers crossed. Yes, okay, we escape. Now what is Jane going to do? Is she going to go back to her house? This is her house, right? She's just going to go back to her room and go to sleep, I think. Okay, so I have to navigate this house in reverse. Because in the last chapter, we left the house, right? I think... I'm just going to go down this hallway and hope I'm right. Cool. So I just jump in the bed. Oh no! Just just sleep sleep in whatever you're wearing right now. Come on, come on! It, it's late. You just want to crash, right, Jane? What is her nightgown? Is it is that thing? I guess it's just that thing. Okay. Coolio. So, can I read the letter from Mom yet? Mom or Dad? Somebody sent me a letter, right? I want to read this letter. It's loading. It's loading. It's probably a cool letter, right? Ah, the letter from Mama. What is it? My dearest Jane, Boston is much improved over the stories I had heard about it some time ago from your cousins who had traveled here a few years ago. Your father's business dealings are going quite well, and it is now hoped we might have the opportunity to travel down the coast to New York. Your father believes there are also some shipping opportunities there, and I would dearly love to see what New Amsterdam has become. I understand that much Dutch is still spoken in the region. I hope you and Bethia have had the opportunity to comfort the Bradburys and provide what assistance you may. In all cases, please make certain that Samuel Phipps has plans confirmed to bring you and Bethia back to Boston no later than the 25th. Papa and I both send our love. Mama. P.S. Mr. Danforth asked if you could pass along a message to Samuel. He wished that it be relayed rather specifically. Here is the message. A true cargo is needed to be transported no later than the 19th. Otherwise, it will spoil on the morrow. What a lovely letter. I am so glad to hear that things are going well with Father's business dealings. If everything goes as I expect, we should easily be back in Boston before the 25th. What's with this weird message? Mr. Danforth wanted to pass this message to Samuel? Who's Samuel? A true cargo is needed to be... Yeah, that's... that's a... Hmm... Very mysterious letter, I would say. Yes, yes, indeed. So, can I leave? What am I doing today? I almost forgot my bonnet again. You can go outside without your bonnet, Jane? Oh, I guess you can't. That would be quite indecent. <sighs> that's, that's... What will I wear today? Y your bonnet. You just said so. I'll put this on last. What? No. Okay, fine. You're wearing... You're wearing green. Very nice for today. Perfect. Ready for the day. Do you ever wash your clothes, Jane? I hope you do. They're probably starting to smell. Ooh, can I go into any of these other rooms? Are they all, they're all just closed doors that I can't go through. Shoot. Oh, hey, hey friend. You're my friend, right? Morning, Jane. How are you this day? Very well, thank you. And yourself? Very well indeed. Did you speak with your grandfather last night? I did, and he has quite a number of new signatures on his petition on behalf of my grandmother. So I am very encouraged. I'm not. I heard the judge say it doesn't matter. So uh, your, your grandma's going to be condemned no matter what. Sorry. I am so glad to hear that. 
He has a meeting with Judge Corwin the day after tomorrow to present his supplement to the original petition. He is already out this morning, following up on a few more signatures. That is exciting news. Ah, here's Bethia. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I have a question for you, Bethia. Yes? Do you have any news on Rebecca? Do you have any news on how Rebecca is doing? Unfortunately, she is still doing poorly. While we were making candles yesterday, I noticed that she was almost out of bayberry wax. I was thinking we might pick some bayberries, and then we could stop by and check on her while at the same time making some wax. That is a splendid idea. I would love to come and help pick bayberries, but then I believe I should return here in case my grandfather should need me. That is an excellent plan. I know just the place. Let's go. Coolio. So we're going, we're going to do the, uh... This is a lovely place, Bethia. Thank you, Jane. There are so many bakeries. I love this time of year. So we're going to do the candle making challenge again. Cool. So let's see if we can find bayberries. Whatever those are. This is going very well. Indeed. This is the perfect day for this. I'm so glad I came. It's so wonderful. Oh, my life Sophia, now has meaning. He is supposed to return this evening, and I'm looking forward to seeing him. That is excellent news. My mama wrote, and in her letter she included a short postcard with a message from your grandfather for Samuel. It was strange. So let's see, I just click on the white stuff and then move it to the basket? Seems simple enough. That is good timing. I'm sure he'll be glad of the message. I see an even better bush. I'm going to move over there. I liked how, how Bethio waited five seconds before responding to what Jane just said. Yeah, that's how normal people communicate. We should have enough bayberries before you know it. This is always so much fun. My basket is almost full as well. Does anyone know the best way of getting away from a skunk? I don't think there is a trick to it. You just back up slowly and then run. Because we have an extra berry picker and he has black fur and a white stripe. <gasps> run! Oh no! I don't think I have ever run so fast. Me either. My legs feel like jelly. Somehow I managed to get here with all my berries. Me too, or at least most of them anyway. I'm glad we got here with all our baskets, and I'm not the one who has to walk back to the ordinary just now. <laughs> okay, so that was kind of a weird interlude. Okay, they, they got attacked by a skunk and ran away. Sure, why not? I so agree with you. Now, if you will look in on Rebecca, I will get started with these bay berries. An excellent idea. Oh, why can't I check in on Rebecca and you do the bayberries? I made candles last time. Well, open the door, go inside. No big deal. I still have the instructions for making candles, right? Kind of? Maybe? Do the bayberries go in one of these pots? I'm guessing they do. Okay, this pot looks empty. Okay. Scooping some water in, scooping some water in, scooping some water until it's scooped. That should do it. Cool. So I melt the bayberries this time. Sweet. Now all we have to do is let them boil for about ten minutes. Ten minutes later. Now to take the pot off the fire and let it cool. Okay, how do I do that? Grab this. There we go. Now that the pot is cool, we can pick the bayberry wax out and put it in the candle making box. Right, so candle making box. 
What are these things? I don't know. I think that might be the wax. That might be the wax. Either that or it's very big kernels of corn. I'm not sure. Where do I put it? Here we go. Now Rebecca has the bayberry wax she needs to make candles next week. Well, good for her. Rebecca is feeling a bit better. How is it going with the bayberries? All done. Everything went smoothly, and the bayberry wax is in Rebecca's candle making box. You are so quick, I don't know how you do it. If you want to go and see how Janie is doing, I will take care of everything here and clean up. <laughs> well, here's how I do it very quickly. I just skip ahead ten minutes until it's done. That's that's how I do it. I was just thinking of Janie, and I think that's a good idea. I know Rebecca is very appreciative of you and I helping out. She has given me these bonnets for you and I as a token of her appreciation. She says they may provide us protection in the dark. Ooh, well, we're going to be sneaking out outside sometime, so yeah. Tag me of joy. I'll see you when you get back to the ordinary. I'll be along shortly. Cool, so I'm going to the ordinary now. So that, that just means this house, right? Okay, Janie, did, did, did your uh, brother show up? Yes, they made much wicks. It was an excellent harvest of bayberry, and I am sure that Rebecca now has enough bayberry wax for several weeks of candle making. That alone should take some worry from Rebecca. <laughs> Jane is exaggerating there. She's got four pieces of wax. That that's probably not going to last her a week, but whatever. It is a difficult time for Rebecca, and she doesn't need to worry about the mundane issues of life. I know the feeling. It seems all I do is sit and worry. I wish there was some diversion to take my mind off things. I noticed there was a Mills table. Would you like to play a game of Mills? I haven't played Mills since I was a little girl, when Grandmama insisted that I learn it. She said all young ladies should know how to play. I think a game of Mills would be a pleasant diversion. Coolio. Well, whoever wrote this game, Seems intent on showing off the fact that they performed a lot of historical research. We need all the protection from evil we can get. My great grandmama used to tell that the Celts had played mills since before they came to our islands, and that the board represents the four winds, the four elements, and the four cardinal directions. There is so much tradition bound up in mills, and that is what makes it so charming. You have white, so you can move first. Click an empty dot on the board. Cool. Click an empty dot on the board. Cool. Um, what am I doing? I think you've done this before. No, I, I have no idea. What are the rules to this game? Strategy is everything. I, I, I don't know what the rules to the game are. You didn't explain them to me. So what's the strategy? You are unnatural at this. Natural? <laughs> Is, is this just tic-tac-toe? Is that what it is? I'm trying to stop somebody from getting tic-tac-toe three in a row? I know why they call this Mills. I'm starting to feel like I'm being ground down. Ha <laughs> ha. What to do now? Select a piece to move on the board. So wait, I select a piece and then an empty spot and I move there. I still have no idea what I'm trying to do oh, here. Aw, uh, well, she got three in a row there. What to do now? No, but seriously, if they explained what I'm, what I'm trying to do, did one of my pieces get destroyed? How did that happen? She moved like that piece there, and this piece in the upper left disappeared. Um. Oh, uh, did it kill another one of my pieces? I know why they call this Mills. I'm 
starting to feel like I'm being ground down. Very astute move. Okay, she moved that piece down and that somehow killed that piece. Strategy is everything. Very astute move. I think you've done this before. What to do now? Nice game. That was fun. What are the rules? And at the very least, it's helped drive some evil thoughts away. It's given me evil thoughts. Have you two had a good time playing? No. No, it was awful. She made me play this game and she didn't explain how it worked. Yes, a very pleasant time. Hi, girls. I hope your brother Samuel brings interesting news when he returns. Already dark, so I expect he should be here any time. Oh, there he is now. Cool. Where is he? I have to say, this. Oh, well, I was gonna say, this has been quite a long chapter, and the chapter has ended. Okay, so that is chapter four of Miss Clue Trials of Salem. I hope you enjoyed it, everybody. Even though I feel like most of the chapter was Judge Corwin giving us a long lecture and then me getting stuck leaving the leaving the barn. And then the rest of it was just Jane hanging out with her friends. So that, that was nice. I like that part. 